Good morning, beloveds. Happy Friday. Look at this beautiful rose quartz I have. It was gifted to me when I was in um, Phoenix. A young lady gave it to me and I just love it. And look at this ring that I got. I got this ring and it has the moon phases. That's the full moon and then all these other little phases of the moon. And today, the moon is in the first quarter phase in Virgo. And the first quarter phase is the halfway point between the new moon and the full moon and we're moving into an eclipse season or we're in the eclipse window so eclipses are a reboot and this eclipse is going to happen in Sagittarius and Sagittarius is our faith I've talked about this before you can go look at some of the past videos if you look at a Jupiter day but it's about our faith and our our faith in our capacity to change our faith and our capacity to live our truths. And as Jupiter is in Capricorn, destroying everything, we have a new question today. I was talking with my mentor and friend, Michael Lennox. You can find him here on um, either YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. And Capricorn is this energy of scaling the mountain to get what you want. And Jupiter is in Capricorn. And so do you have the faith for you to get what you want, the faith to stay the course to get what you want. So these eclipses are very significant. I really encourage you to be doing internal work right now because we see that the world is coming undone and but there is another reality being built and you have to find it inside of yourself. It's a it's a you have to enter the portal of the new reality through your consciousness and that's an internal thing that, you know, you you might need a mentor or a teacher to help you with or something, but it's, this shit is coming undone, so do something. Anyway, um, like I said, the moon is in Virgo. Virgo is about perfecting ourselves. The sun is in Gemini. This is a very mercurial energy. Gemini just entered, Mercury just entered Cancer. So we are looking for a sense of security like, and it's important to think thoughts and create a story that is one where you are winning in this story, where you are not at the effect of others. It's very important right now to pay attention to the victim story. Like we are, we're, there's a lot of victim um, stories being perpetuated, a lot of trauma being passed around in our social media. And it's very significant at this time that you turn off the victim story. One of the things that's really important for people of color to understand is that we are not victims. It looks like we're victims, but the universal system that we're in is all cause and effect. Everything here is cause and effect. That was a really difficult thing for me to get when I started really practicing spirituality and understanding race relations because I felt so victimized. I felt like being a black person meant that I could not have happiness and joy, that I was going to be cut off from my ability to thrive because of my skin color. And when I started to study the universe, I realized that there are no victims and that black people, we are connected cosmically, empathically, psychically to this system. So our thoughts are creating our realities faster and unlike any other group of people because we are connected. We are, we are infused with this um, energy where we can feel everything and where we connected to everything. And so our inability to control our minds is our problems, to control our minds and our feelings. It's we have to teach ourselves to see beyond the experience, to collapse realities that we're in and understand that our thinking and our alignment with the thinking is what is creating the reality. So if we're holding on to trauma from 400 years of slavery, we are still continuing to create that reality and create those experiences through our belief systems. So when people say, you know, did such and such and such cause this or cause that, we all caused it because we have not healed the trauma in our subconscious, which is generating this reality. And so as long as we are holding this subconscious experience of 
being slaves and being brutalized and being traumatized and being, um, and being, um, you know, all of these history, these things historically, because of the way we communicate with the cosmos, we truly are creating it. It's just how it is. And it's a hard thing to grok, but it is the truth. And if we can accept that that's the truth and understand that cause and effect is at play all of the time, and that that is the most loving force of the universe, that it gives you what you think about yourself. So if you think that, you know, white people are out to get you, you're going to create that. If you think that you can't get ahead in this system and I got to do this and hustle, and I, you're going to experience that. If you think that because I'm black, then I'm never going to have what I want. You're going to experience that because you are black and you are absorbing the energy of the sun and then the, you are reflecting it back out through your psyche. I'm telling you, we got to understand our power and how it works because we are misusing it right now and we are creating the scenarios that we don't desire because of our ignorance. So the moon is in, I mean, Venus, today is a Venus day. Venus is in retrograde in Gemini. And the retrograde energy is here to help us transform the way we relate, the way we relate to the environment, the way we relate to our thinking, the way we understand this incredible experience. So we have this opportunity right now to shift the way we relate. I am having a really fascinating time because I am having to give my, I'm giving myself the opportunity. I'm putting myself in old experiences. And for me, as a child, I sought men to make me feel validated because of my father wasn't there. So I started having sex really young at 13 um, because there was a need inside of me to connect because I needed to feel here. I needed to feel connected and loved. I remember when my mother died, having an overwhelming feeling that my um, solar plexus had been yanked out. And it felt like the only thing that would make me feel good was a man. It was the weirdest thing. I remember talking to a girlfriend of mine and I was like, the only thing that would make me feel connected right now is sex and a man. And, and I just became curious about that. I was like, what is that? That because it was the absence of my father. So when my mother died, it was like my feminine and masculine energies within me were, um, energetically depleted. So I would fuel my masculine energy by going out to a man and absorbing his energy. And, and, but it was false because you can't get what you need on the outside of you. You have to source it on the inside, especially if you're a woman, you have to source it through a divine internal well-being. And so right now I'm in the process of being with myself. I have this relationship with this incredible man who um, is beautiful and masculine and lovely and a friend. And I'm my old stuff is up. And so I'm asking myself, can I do something new in the old experience rather than doing what I used to do, which was like, oh, is this the one? For Since I was 13 and puberty started, I was like, is this the one? Is he the one? Is he the one? Is he the one? Is he the one? Oh, that's the one. That's the one. From one man to the next. And now I'm recognizing that none of them are the one. I am the one. So I'm asking myself to bring my the value back to me. I have everything I need within me. And this is not easy for me, but I'm doing it and I'm and I'm harnessing my power. I'm reclaiming my power by reminding myself that no one is the one but me. And so what that means is like, how can I love myself right where I am? How can I restore the 13 year old girl inside of me that feels like she has to go out and find a man in order to feel whole and safe and secure in the world? How can I feel whole now? How can I feel loved now? How can I feel like I'm enough now? that I don't need anyone to validate that, that I don't need anyone to reassure me of my wholeness, of my security and my safety in the world. How can I tell myself a story now that who I am, that what I have, that how I look, that how I am in the world is enough, is aligned with the divinity that is God, that is the God consciousness. 
And so I encourage you today, as we are in this Venus retrograde energy on this Venus day, to become aware of the story you tell yourself about love and how you get it and how you source it, how you source it. And how can you renew that story? How can you create a new story around love and relationship? I am doing it one day at a time by just yesterday I was hanging out with a friend of this friend of mine who's helping me with some work stuff. And when we're in the space together, there's so much Eros energy. Like I tend to carry a lot of sexual energy. It just is it's a part of my dynamic. And um and so I'm I'm harnessing the energy inside of me and beginning to channel it inside rather than projecting it out. And so I'm asking myself, I feel all this energy in me and it feels like a lot of sexual energy. What can I use it for? Rather than making someone else be responsible for it or making it mean that this is the one or that we're gonna be together or this, or, I'm just saying, I have what I need. How can I use this for me? <laughs> I don't need to become um, focused on another person. This is my power. How do I use it? So with that, happy Venus Day. The moon is in Virgo. You are going to perfect your story today. You're going to look at who you are, look at the story you're telling yourself, and perfect it. And if you'd like to do a Venus retrograde reading, I encourage you to do that. You can find that in my link tree. You can also enroll for the Venus Retrograde class, What You Won't Do for Love. A hundred and almost 10 of you have enrolled for that course, and that can assist you in realigning your story around relationship. And then today, later on this evening, I'll be releasing Venus Retrograde Cream. Cash money, y'all. Cash money rules everything because Venus governs money. So it's time to re-up, reframe your relationship to money. And I'm going to be offering so many jewels on how we really relate to this construct of money, how we've been misrelating to it wrong, how we have been giving it power that is not true, and how we can reframe our energy around it so that it flows in a way that allows us to stay open and fluid and wet and joyful and creative. I am the Moon Mama. Have a wonderful day. Peace and blessings. Bye, y'all.